I don't kidnap. I only keep people a little. Says I'm for a terrorist chief. The notorious bandit kingpin Ada Aleru, who was recently named the second Fulani in Utangdaji Emirates, the head of the Fulani in Yadu Tandaji, in a chilling confession, said he does not kidnap people but kill them. The coronation of Mr. Aleru, who is the leading terrorist in Safi and Faskari, as this of Zafar and Castilla State, generated public outcry across the country. The state government subsequently suspended the aim of the town. Aliu Mareva, who conferred the title on Aleru, is wanted in neighboring Castana State for mass killing. Honestly, it's with, with a heavy heart this day that I am reading this news. A wanted criminal, a wanted killer, a wanted bandit was publicly ordained given a title, a wanted criminal, and the government is saying they are looking for him. The security operatives were there with them. Somebody that was declared wanted. Is it not a shame that an individual is above the law in a state where the government has all the apparatus to get somebody arrested, somebody that has killed a meme, and they are saying they don't have anything to do he was being interviewed and nobody could arrest him. Those that were interviewing him, Abba, this is a shame. Honestly, it's like these people that, that really knows, they don't even know the magnitude of what has happened. Is it that they are happy that innocent souls are deliberately being killed by people? Okay, what is the offense of these people that are being killed? Nothing. Nothing. Just because somebody is there wants to become a blood sucker, a vampire. You are taking a government is there. Imagine two states are saying they cannot do anything as far and are not saying they are just telling us what, in fact, the ear is not even supposed to hear. Police were there behind him when he was being given the title. The security operators, are they not there? Are they saying they cannot go there because of what? Is it that the individuals are more powerful than the state? Honestly, this is a shame and a cause for serious. For somebody that wants to continue to rule those two states, they need somebody with a heart of lion that can take decision. Or no matter who us is God. We cannot continue that this as a nation. Individuals will be terrorizing states and the government will be looking and saying they cannot do anything. Honestly, this is a shame. This is a shame. The government in a normal climate by now, the two governors will have been have been, been, have been removed. Either impeached or so the government taking the decision to remove them because this is called for emergency. The man is already moving up and down. The government declares they wanted this is this is a shame. The state government subsequently suspended the enemy of the town, Ali Marafa, who conferred the title on Ali, who is wanted in neighboring Castana State for mass killing. The Castana government placed a bounty of five million naira on information leading to the arrest of Aleru, who is accused of killing 52 people in Kadiswa, a community in Faskari local government in 2019. In his first and only known interview with the media, Aleru told the BBC that he is angry with Aussas and the Nigerian government. Angry with Aussas and Nigerian government. For what? In a documentary titled The Bandit Warlords of Zafara, Built to be aired on the 25th of July, Mr. Alero said while his men kidnap people, he's only interested in killing people. My men do that, I just go and kill them, Mr. Alero said. An unnamed associate of Alero told the BBC African team that the Fulani are systematically excluded from government jobs and other economic opportunities, margin, and that the Nigerian Air Force attacked innocent Fulani elders and killed their cattle. How have the Fulani become so worthless in Nigeria? He asked. He lamented that the grazing route the federal the Fulani rely upon have been closed off while land and water have become very scarce. And is that why he's killing people? Is that enough excuse to begin to kill?
The BBC also interviewed the terrorist who abducted puppies from the government gay secondary school in Jangepi, Talata Mafara, local government areas of our state. While the state government insisted that no ransom was paid, he said they were paid 60 million before they released the people. The government will come and tell us another story. No ransom was paid to catch him now. They have the money to waste instead of them to go after him. Instead of them go after the bandits, they are giving them ransom. At the end of the day, they are using the money. That means you are you are you are giving weapons, you are empowering your enemy against the state. Why are we like this? Is it that they are not thinking these people? When asked what they did with the money, he said we bought more rifles. The stressing scene, including that of a boy dying from a gunshot wound, we are also released in the documentary. I remember how he raised his head to look at me while he was in that condition. The boy father told the BBC, it paid me how much my boy suffered. I am devastated. Who will not be devastated with this kind of thing? And BBC came, where was he interviewed? Honestly, these people too should be assisting. If they can get where to interview this man, and they cannot give information to the government, or even if they give them the information, will they act? Because it's strange to me that an individual will be working freely with all this atrocity he has committed. Meanwhile, people that have done lesser crime, they have been treated, they have been locked up, they have been killed anyhow, and somebody that is glaringly doing this evil, is being just, they just look at him casually and remove their face. The BBC said it gathered that the teenage boy whose sister was among the unprotected Jangambe school girls was killed by security forces. Part of the findings by the documentary team was the growing bitterness against the Fulani community by the Hausa community, which was evidenced in the encounter between the team and residents of Kafandanya. If Allah we will kill every Fulani man, even in the town, say one of the villages, because they kill our mothers, our fathers, our children, and dump their bodies here. A resident declared in protest the killing of over 200 people by the terrorists. This is Hanami. A lot of things are happening that is even underreported. I've not heard anywhere where they said over 200 people have been killed. Why are we like this as a nation? Resident took the reporter to site of mass graves. A documentary further confirmed that the violence in the region is largely aggravated by vengeance rather than protection. The vigilante groups are largely residents of Hausa communities. You can see many Nigerians are quite rightly disturbed by the idea that the violence contains elements of an ethnic conflict, but that is the inescapable conclusion from listening to the voice in that film. The BBC said in a statement announcing the release of the court documentary, it is obvious it is tribal, said Asad Antawai, a terrorist who was among the first Fulani men to bring guns into Zamfara and take up arms at the head of terror gang. If not, how can someone pass settlement or pull down only the Fulani ones? Why will a Fulani kill an innocent Hausa? Clearly, it is tribal conflict. The BBC Africa has said the documentary seek to offer its contribution toward the unraveling of the conflict. This is seriously a big issue. You can see it is beyond what we have been hearing. If between the same country, people that will look at us one, they are not killing themselves. It's not the tribal who cleans between Hausa and Fulani. For how long are we going to do to continue like this? Is it that the government are not aware? Can they call these people together and see how they work? So it shows that the houses are the farmers, while the Fulanis are the headsmen. And you know, with all this crisis up and down, they go to their farm, destroy their farm land, and they cannot do anything. The Fulani men, guys are armed, the house farmers are not armed. Why will this not continue? Government, honestly, is with a heavy heart that I'm reading this, and it's a very shameful thing that governments in those states, for this number of years, they have not been able to sit down and address this issue. Please, what is your own opinion on this? Are we going to continue like this as a nation with this kind of thing, killing innocent souls, not being able to resolve conflict between two? I hope we will not get to the issue of Tutsi and Nutsi in this country. Kindly make your opinion known as you subscribe to my page. See you very soon. God bless.